Welcome everyone. We have a special podcast for you today in honor of our hashtag International Podcast Day. Let me introduce you to uh, three people here who have a uh, heavy hand in our international success. We've got Mark Fought, Operations Manager, uh, oversees uh, sales, fulfillment, and uh, our implementation teams. We've got Jeff White, uh, Implementation Supervisor and renowned cool kid. Hello. And we've got uh, Robert Bobby Herring, uh, known of all things GDPR and security, and our data protection officer. And for the special day, we want to take some time to uh, let you guys see what 365 does to make our international success possible. Um, you know, we make it look easy here, but there's actually a lot that goes into it. Um, we're just going to get started. Jeff and uh, Mark, uh, how do some um, 365 accommodate international software and our backend variations, uh, taxes, currency, as it varies between the different countries that we're in? Yeah, so we, we continue to make tremendous strides with our international development in order to get kiosks in the field all over the world. Uh, Micromarkets and convenience technologies are really thriving in the U.S. And at 365, we always have made it a priority to bring those services to other countries worldwide. We're currently in 11 countries and have successful, successfully implemented hundreds of micromarkets outside of the U.S. And then our success internationally has come from uh, our ability to change our domestic kiosks so that they can uh, thrive more in an international environment. So we've set up... So they can switch between two different languages, um, pretty much set it up between anything, you know, French, Italian, anything. It's a top right corner, there'll be usually either a flag or it'll say in that language and you can just tap and select mm -hmm. between the two. Um, we've also adjusted our uh, tax system to allow for different provinces in Canada, for the like Ontario and Quebec, because they do a, kind of a different tax setup there, as mm -hmm. well as VAT taxes in, in the UK. Um, we've also set up our expansion units, which allow for bills from different countries, um, like specifically the euro. Gotcha. Okay. So with all these different variations and uh, currencies you can, uh, can accept, can you kind of walk us through like a staging of like an international kiosk? Yes. Yeah, so it's a little different compared to uh, domestic kiosks. It's a, a twofold process. We'll end up getting a inventory units for, say, Italy or the UK, and we'll do about 20 of them. So that way, they'll just have them on hand. So we'll stage them to the point where they're just ready to go, and all we have to do is just move it to a specific location. So what will end up happening is we'll have it completely set up. They'll send another work order in or a sales order in that we can stage the kiosk toward um, X location, mm -hmm. and then we just work with uh, NIAX or... Um, uh, Televent to do those different currencies for credit card transactions. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Well, um, with all these different transactions, you know, through the the different countries, Rob, does um, can you kind of expand on on GDPR uh, and its implementation in the world, like um, kind of an overview and how it affected the you know the industry? Yeah. So hi, hi, Dylan. By the way, I didn't say hi earlier. <laughs> so. Uh, GDPR stands for the General Data Protection Regulation, and that was implemented in May 2018. Um, it basically is a new law for all internet companies that affects the data that you provide them. So essentially, this law affects everyone in the EU, mm -hmm. also um, European economic areas. So that's everyone that does business with European Union. Mm -hmm. So that's a large, not all majority of technology companies. I'm sure everyone was bombarded in May uh, 2018 with privacy policies and terms and condition updates. Mm -hmm. um, that's a huge part of complying with GDPR. Um, some of the laws surrounding that were about um, the right to be forgotten, which is a big change for most tech companies because, for instance, Facebook. Um, when you would delete your account in the past, you could just sign back in a few days later and everything's still there. Mm. So for us, that was a big change because we didn't really have a, a solid process for deleting information. 
and and that's just one of the you know many things con- considering GDPR is a huge lot, mm-hmm. 99 articles and 173 uh, recitals, so it's it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Well, yeah, that does sound hefty and complicated, but I'm glad you're on the task, Rob. <laughs> um, so, everyone, if you could, uh, and if you're sure you have some stories you can share, you know, with uh, how you've been part of our international growth and you know, how your role has changed um, due to our, our expansion into other countries uh, around the world. Um, Mark, you want to go first? Sure. Um, so 365 International started really as its own entity within 365. However, due to the amazing growth we've seen over the last few years, we've now fully integrated the international products and processes into each of our departments. This really ensures that all the customers and the operators are actually receiving that same level of knowledge and support from our team members at 365. And in order to really integrate this properly, we've had to learn the intricacies of each country's settings and differences. And with such a major shift internally, it was a lot to get up to speed, a lot of work to really get up to that speed. And from an operational perspective, I know we'll continue to see and continued improvement and growth from our international processes as well. Thanks. <laughs> How about you, Rob? Yeah, so uh, my role drastically changed uh, with our international growth and implementation of GDPR. So I was an information security analyst and handling only security requests. Mm -hmm. Uh, Based off the law for GDPR, you're required to have a data protection officer, so my role changed um, or promoted to data (laughs) protection officer. Um, So now I'm in charge of all 365's compliance with GDPR, EU, um, and I handle all data requests, um, stay up to date on the privacies and policies, and work with supervisor authorities in Europe as well. Yeah, so that's pretty, a pretty dramatic change then. Yeah, it's yeah. more law than just security, and security is a large part of the law. So, so um, with like these new roles, have you guys faced any uh, hurdles, or um, do you have any like frequently asked questions that international operators kind of ask you about things? Yeah, for sure. Um, Two of the biggest hurdles I believe we've had to overcome and really continue to adapt to are the time differences between each country in the U.S., as well as getting our internal knowledge up to par for each European country, as they really do differ slightly between each. Um, 365 now offers a 24-7 support center, which actually allows for assistance to international customers on their time and currently our training teams are working on international training programs that allow everyone to build up their, their internal knowledge on the international kiosk and really get everyone on the same level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, from, from my point of view, there's been a lot of development changes and processes as well as uh, you know, all the requests for data to be removed mm-hmm. um, by declining the policies on our uh, kiosk. Um, because of this, operators are curious as to what the process is for handling these requests and how do we comply with the regulation. Um, this all fall back some, falls back on what I spoke about earlier, um, and that's the right to be forgotten and users having full access into their data. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess really for everyone, can you kind of tell us what um, our listeners can you know, look forward to when it comes to you know, serving our international clients, kind of what's in store for the future. Definitely. Um, 365 has always really you know, prided itself on our customer service. It's always been something we're, we're really good at. And our international clients can really look forward to a customer service experience in which we're going we're gonna to address their issues quickly and efficiently. We have a variety of items which are in store for the future for international clients, which range from process improvements and automation to online web forms and providing implementation support during international business hours. We'll continue to make our processes easier and more efficient for everyone involved as we move towards the future. And additionally, we've created and implemented a 365 Help Center which is available not only to our internal teams, but also allows our operators to quickly access any necessary information they may need. 
and this help center is being updated daily to provide new and accurate information for everyone. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, um, so we're always working diligently to keep our customers' data secure. Um, we stay up to date with the latest mandatory regulations and policy changes and work with our attorneys quite often. Mm -hmm. And uh, some features that we're working on currently are automating a lot of the processes that I handle myself currently. So that way there's less of a delay to delete your data. Nice. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Um, thanks for uh, you know, enlightening everyone on our international footprint here um, and uh, thanks for everyone else for joining us on uh, International Podcast Day um, be sure to like follow subscribe stay up to date on what we're doing globally and if you're interested in a Liddy partnership with us hit us up marketing at 365smartshop.com thanks Dylan thanks guys thanks, thanks everyone. Everyone. bye <laughs>